Hello everyone. I am Tom at a hack. In today's presentation I will be presenting the progress article exoselectrogenic bacteria that power microbial fuel cells. I am doing this presentation under the supervision of Professor Saki Jung. Without further ado let's start the presentation. This progress article explores the underlying reasons for exocellular electron transfer, including cellular respiration and possible cell-cell communication, to understand bacterial versatility in mechanisms used for current generation. The paper is divided into the following sections. Introduction of MFC. Advantages of exoelectrogenesis. High power producing bacterial species. Setting anode potentials. Limits in power production and future direction. Conventional fuel cells produce electricity electrochemically from chemicals such as hydrogen, methanol, etc. MFC use microorganisms to produce electricity. The process is as follows. First microorganisms biologically oxidize organic matter. Then the electrons are transferred to the anode. These electrons flow through a circuit to the cathode. The electrons are then combined with protons and a chemical catholite. The reduction of oxygen is catalyzed by precious or non-precious metals. The microbial fuel cell in the figure uses an electrically conductive graphite fiber brush for bacterial growth on the surface. A flat carbon cloth coated with a catalyst is used as a cathode, for water leakage reduction a diffusion layer is used. A separator is used for allowing charge transfer. Oxygen is reduced to water by electrons from the circuit and protons in the water. The green cells represent exoelectrogens that are capable of transferring electrons by direct contact. Purple cells can produce as nanowires, blue cells are endogenous that can produce self-produced mediators. Brown cells are called non-exoelectrogenic bacteria that live off products produced from other microorganisms. In a MFC a voltage of 0.3 to 0.5 volt is usually obtained. Simple molecule or complex mixtures of organic matter can be used in a microbial fuel cell. Having a flexible range of fuels makes MFC an ideal technology for renewable bioelectricity generation. Studies confirmed that four classes of proteobacteria, firmicutes and acidobacteria phyla can generate current. Microorganisms capable of exocellular electron transfer are known as exoelectrogens, electrochemically active bacteria, anode, respiring bacteria, and they are also known as electricogens. Relation of other bacteria with exoelectrogenic strains and how the mixtures of communities affect power production are still under studies. The following table shows culture studies of exoelectrogenic activity without exogenous mediator. Here are some more similar cases. In this section, the advantages of exoelectrogenesis are discussed. Bacteria transfer electron by three mechanisms. The mechanisms are, one, direct contact by outer membrane cytochromes. Two, by excreted mediators also known as shuttles and three, by using synthesized nanowire. Then we have three reasons why microorganisms can use exocellular electron transfer to generate power in MFC. Firstly, cell respiration using solid metal oxides. Secondly, cells can transfer electrons directly to another cell without intermediates and lastly, exogenous electron transfer. Knowledge about bacterial respiration, cell, cell communication and the fundamentals of electron transfer will be useful in the following fields, medical applications hydrogen gas production and bioelectricity production. In this section we will discuss about high power producing bacterial species. Power density of the MFC are dependent on the following factors instead of specific bacterium. The factors that impact power density are specific architecture, electrode spacing and solution conductivity. Power densities produced by a bacterium cannot be directly compared with another bacterium unless the MFC architecture and chemical solution are the same. MFC designed with lower internal resistance have allowed examination of a range of factors that affect power production. The maximum power produced in pure and mixed cultures is dependent on electrode sizes and reactor architecture. Now let us discuss about two experimental cases. 
Schwannella putrefaciens was first shown to produce electricity in the absence of exogenous mediators in 1999. The production of high power densities has been possible under certain reactor conditions. Schwannella have outer membrane cytochromes for direct electron transfer by contact, but they can also extrude electrically conductive nanowires. S. Wannidensis also produces flavins that can function as electron shuttles. Despite the possibility that this bacterium could use multiple methods for exocellular electron transfer, it produced 56% less power than an acclimated wastewater inoculum. In this section we will focus on the importance of setting anode potentials. Setting the anode potential allows us to measure electrical potentials for electron release. Without this artificial control of potential, the anode potential varies with the load. The more negative the anode potential at a set resistance, the greater the energy recovery in an MFC and the lower the energy captured by the bacterium. Using a potentiostat to polarize the anode at a specific potential enables us to measure the potentials at which microorganisms can transfer electrons. It should be noted that errors in the literature made it seem that higher power densities have been achieved using polarized electrodes. In a mixed community, the microorganisms that can respire at the most negative anode potential perform the best. The ability of bacterial strains to achieve high current densities at certain anode potentials does not ensure these strains will dominate in an MFC microbial community. In this figure, we can see potentials compared with reactors with set potentials. The anode potential of an operating microbial fuel cell is slightly more positive than the thermodynamic limit for the substrate. This restricts energy gains by the bacteria but allows high energy capture. Since power production is the main objective of a microbial fuel cell, the factors that are limiting the power production are significantly important. On the basis volumetric or projected anode area, power densities for microorganisms has not been achieved. In an air cathode microbial fuel cell, up to 1.55 kW per meter cube has been achieved. Between 1999 and 2006 power densities in microbial fuel cell increased by six orders of magnitude to 1.54 watt per meter square. The reasons are the following, improvements in architecture and extraction power from bacteria more effectively. Factors that can stop us from achieving maximum power densities are the presence of non-exoelectrogenic bacteria and non-active cells that disrupt the electrical conductivity of the biofilm. The following factors can help achieve better power density. Models of biofilm activities. Understanding the effect of pH in the biofilm and effect of carbon dioxide gradients in the biofilm. In the figure, data published from 1999 to 2006 are represented by circles. Data that emphasize higher power densities are represented by triangles. In a special case where anode with a cathode that was 14 times larger was used produced a high power density of 6,860 milliwatt per meter square is represented by a rectangle. The line indicates a maximum predicted power density on the basis of substrate limited mass transfer to the anode. In this section, future advancement that can be made in the field of microbial fuel cell is discussed. In the future it is expected that microbial fuel cell can be used as standalone method of power generation. In the United States, 1.5% of the electricity is used for wastewater treatment, and 4-5% to is used for the whole water infrastructure. Wastewater contains 9.3 times the energy as energy used to treat the wastewater. It may be possible to make water infrastructure sustainable through energy recovery from wastewaters using MFC. MFC can provide power in remote locations, where it is difficult to replace batteries regularly. Surface optimization can be achieved by biosensor development and performance of enzyme-based fuel cells. Genetically engineered electrogenic bacteria can improve current generation. Here are the questions. In an MFC, what oxidizes organic matters biologically? What is the name of the microorganism that transfers electrons directly to an electrode outside the cell membrane? What is the role of the separator in MFC? I'm Sahmida Haq and today I did my presentation and thank you everyone for um, staying and paying attention and I'm sorry that I was so nervous. Oh, okay. Let's go.